Hey, I'm Jonathan, and I live in London, England. Hey, I'm Jeff, and I live in Perth, Australia. Together, we are Echo and Sidetrack. We produce music that sounds like this. And this. And even this. This podcast is about music, creativity, and everything in between the giant space that separates us. Welcome to A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack. We're also brought to you by Microology Coffee Roasters, another amazing Perth company doing some big things. They source their coffee from around the world, roast it right here in WA, and can send it to you wherever you are so you can enjoy the sweet, sweet brown liquid that is coffee. This week, we uh, have a discount code for you. That discount code is Sidetrack. That's spelled S-I-D-E-T-R-A-C-K at micrology.com.au. Enter Sidetrack at checkout for 20% off. Get some coffee beans sent to you and um, if you want it pre-ground or something because you don't have a grinder and you just want to try it out, just um, add that in the, in the notes and they'll sort it out for you. Micrology Coffee Roasters. By far the best coffee you've had ever. This podcast is also brought to you by Short Order Burger Co., Personally, I think it's the best burger in Australia. There's one store on Hay Street in the city and a new shop in Fremantle. Go get a nice, tasty, wet one right inside. Right inside. Right inside. Right inside. Jeff, breakfast is cancelled. Yes. Tell me <laughs> what happened. For those of you not in Australia, breakfast is a popular festival on Boxing Day in Perth. A stalwart for 20 years. This was to be its 20th year. News came down the pipeline that it had been cancelled. Jeff, tell us more. So, it got cancelled because of the current restrictions that um, the WA government is putting on large gatherings would make it not feasible. Um, A festival that normally attracts, you know, 10,000 people was told that it would have a limit of 1,500. It couldn't. Uh, it had a time limit. They couldn't ha- serve alcohol after or before a certain time. Yeah, like they're only going to be have fifty. You know, have fifteen hundred people in a in a massive amphitheater, and a hundred people on the dance floor. Correct? And a, yeah, hundred people on the dance floor. What the fuck, man? And so the event organizers just said, you know what? No, it's not worth it. Um, That's really good that they have made the decision to um, to change that. To, to, to pull back and just not do the show. Like. Yeah, because there has been a few, um, I don't want to say names, but there's been a few recently that have gone ahead and there's been a lot of backlash. People have been like, why the fuck did I pay money to come to this? This is lame. Like, But there was things where, like, you know, music stopped, you know, four or five times over the course of the night. And um, a, a, loud, a message came over the loudspeaker. Yeah, to like socially distance and... I saw a video of that on Facebook and, and laughed and was like, what the fuck? It was very Orwellian. It was also, I think as well, there was some that like had approval and then, you know, managed to get approvals and probably didn't tell the customers the full extent of what the approvals meant. So the mm. festival was allowed to go to he- ahead they were able to take the money and then it was like, yeah, this is not kind of... This is not the experience I paid for. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I think more pl- more people are learning from that and, um, yeah, breakfast was cancelled. But hopefully it can come back next year and, like many other festivals, do um, what they were wanted to do this year. Um, but it was uh, it's disappointing because I was really looking forward to playing it. But on the plus side, Jonathan, um, I did feel a little bit bad that our first, you know, big show in the Belvoir Amphitheatre, the theatre, the amphitheatre that we have spent so much time in as punters, and we have played in, but I'm um, very early in the day. Um, I was going to play that first show myself, and so it's nice to be able to have that postponed until next time and we can do it together maybe it's a sign jeff maybe it's a sign yeah i'm starting to believe more of that kind of stuff things happen for a reason and we're right where we're meant to be exactly are you uh, how are you doing today you seem a little uh distracted distracted why because i'm standing mm. like because i'm upright like this no because you're looking 
You've just then you're kind of looking up like I don't well, know. You just seem like you're thinking. You, it just seems like you're thinking. No, it's 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 just how I've it's just how I've got the mic stand because I I, okay. I I adjusted the height. Uh, oh. so I'm um, yeah speaking into it from a different angle, trying something different. But I imagine it's going to go back to normal next week. So fear not. Apart from breakfast, uh, this week's been yeah I don't know man a little strange. A little strange? Why? I don't know, there's uncertainties going on for us in other parts. And um, I don't know, there's, I'm just, uh, you know, catching up on my existence, it feels like. Maybe it's just today. I'm um, just running around a bit at work and doing some other stuff. And there's, you know, my, the list of things I want to achieve in the week grows my time and space to do it shrinks do you think you have a good idea of what you can accomplish in what a certain amount of time uh i think that has definitely improved over time i still think i'm getting um coming to grips with it also um, i'm getting better at saying i can't do that thing today i will do it tomorrow um and accepting that but then knowing that I have to do that thing tomorrow it can sometimes be frustrating because I was like I thought I was going to get that off the list today do do you feel like you kind of come to the end of a day and reflect on what you've accomplished in that day and often think yeah I did enough and I did the things that I wanted to do and it's you know I've made a list of six things but I only got three of them done but that's okay or do you get to the end of the day, your day and be like fuck I should have done more how often do you think you're saying I should have done more com- opposed to I did enough um, yeah definitely saying should a lot um, another thing uh, that bothers me and why I can feel this energy in my body is that I haven't um, exercised for four days because I planned to this afternoon, but then uh, something else came up and I had to deal with that. So rather than get frustrated, I said, that's cool. I'll deal with that. Then I will help finish off the Christmas lights that um, I saw that video. You sent me a video of the the family Christmas lights going on, which was uh, very good. Yeah. Made me feel uh, very happy that I wasn't there to have to help put them up because that's always a shitty, a bit of a shitty job. Uh, I kind of enjoyed it this year. Like- <laughs> no, nah, I, I also, I, I enjoy being on the roof with dad. I, I do. It's a nice, it's a nice thing. I think it's a nice family thing we do. It's, um, it's got, it's gotten simp- simpler over time. Yeah. Ever since dad got those robotic legs that just carry him up, it's been <laughs> a godsend. Uh, remember the year we did it, me and you? Yeah, we smashed it, didn't we? Definitely. I think it was... Yeah, how do you remember that? Because I don't even remember what year it was. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember it. I was probably very drunk or hung over at the time. I feel like it was would have been after like a big ape or something and we would have had to do it. Um, I remember Dad still like telling us some things, but we, I think we did pretty well. I'm sure we did. I mean, we we basically know what to do. It's just about where he wants to run the power from and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, the and the previous incarnation of the Christmas lights was de- powered from the garage. Now he's got some outdoor power power points that he yeah. uses. And um, yeah. And I remember when they were away, it became a thing like, oh no, I, f- I remember coming home one night and our house was dark and being like, oh, I forgot to turn the Christmas lights on. Like I just felt like the biggest Scrooge. I remember not turning them off. Oh, yeah. That, that ha- also happened. I remember, and I would just leave them on, and then in the daytime, I wouldn't notice they're on, and then I'd come home and be like, oh, oh God, they've been on all day. I should point out to the listener that for the last <laughs> 20 years, we've done uh, Christmas lights, probably longer than 20 years, actually, maybe like closer to 30 uh, or 25, but... um. Yeah, the street's done Christmas lights. And this is as, like, you know, people have come and gone in the street and, uh, you know, sometimes they've had different uh, levels of um, elaborateness. Is that even a word? Um, 
I wanted to say elaborability, but that's definitely not a word. I think just say elaborability. His elaborability is quite low. It got to the point where, you know, there were tourist buses coming, like, around Christmas time. Channel 7 News came one year. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Like, the, at its It was, peak, like, the most famous... It wasn't the most famous. Not in the Perth, obviously. But not even in Sorrento. There were some bigger streets in Sorrento. Uh, there was the Christian's cul-de-sac, which was Cadiz. the original. Cadiz. For those people... In a very specific part of <laughs> But then we got popular and we were the one. Well, because, because there was also more houses along our street. It was fucking sick. There was like, people out there drinking, uh, like having little neighborlies. And, and we had our, uh, our next door neighbor across the road on Christmas Eve. Was it Christmas Eve or even like two days, three days before Christmas? She would dress up as Santa Claus and like ring a bell on her um, driveway and um, oh, yeah. and like be sitting there drinking some champagne and having a laugh, talking to all the kids, and it was amazing. Giving it was like, like, like lollies away. Yeah, it was like an awesome Christmas vibe. Our street, for a time, had a real community feel. I mean, it still does, but it's just a different people. We've grown up, the kids that we played with moved out, we moved out, it, it changed. It's not the same. It's not the same street that it was in 1998. <laughs> or 2004. Um, but yeah. Or any year consequent to that. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I like seeing the video uh, that you sent. It made me think of what Christmas lights I'm going to put up at my house. We we put some up the front, but I think I'm going to buy some more. And, and I can't believe it's the 1st of December, to be honest. I um, had yeah, to date some things today and I was like, whoa. This does not, this feels like the weirdest 1st of December in a while. I'm, what well, I want to know, Jonathan, since we remembered so many things last week and shout out to all the people that um got in touch with their own little memories of uh, various couches, that seemed to be a, um, a subject that people attached themselves to, various couches that they'd sat on and done certain things. Um, but I wanted to ask you, Jono, what do you remember about like December or this time of year from any, any time, but like, what does this time of year feel like to you? This time of year feels like, I've always kind of associated December 1st with knowing that it's the last, and this sounds a bit silly, but knowing that it's the last month of the year, New Year's Eve and the month leading up to it has always felt like it is the finishing of something. Mm. It's like the last five minutes on an exam, the last 10 minutes of a movie. There's a feeling of something coming to an end. Um, And the 1st of December or December in general is always like in the back of my mind, there's this thing of like, I've got to wrap, I got to wrap this year up well (laughs) in some way, you know? Mm. And I think when I'm back home, because I've, I've, this is the first Christmas that I'm going to be away for, I associate it with heat, being hot. Getting excited for Origin. Getting excited for Breakfast. Getting excited for all sorts of shows. I remember the weekend coming up, it'll be like December 12th this year. But that weekend, you know, it's been as late as December 15 and as early as like December 12th or whatever. That weekend would always have a a show on it that would start signaling the wind up to the party. Last year on the 21st of December, we had our adventure show and that was the last weekend that everyone was working and that had a real energy to it and we had breakfast. Yeah. Um, there were a bunch of other parties in between. Um, we went to breakfast, didn't we? Yeah, we We did. played at breakfast last year. <sighs> did we? Yes, we did. We shared the stage with the likes of um, Scientific and... Oh, that's right. And Dirty Phonics. Yep. And, and um, Favour came out. Favour, yeah, Phil. Oh, um, Foreign Beggars as well. Yes. Pav, Pav was there. Um, so, it, this all this ramps up. And like for, during when I was at school, I'd, I was saying to someone the other day that I remember this time of year feels like finishing coming to the end of school and you know if anyone listening yeah. in the northern hemisphere where this is you know we're in summer now it's starting to get pretty hot though the weather hasn't quite done that sweltering thing yet 
Um, climate change, motherfuckers. We really have to do something about that. It's uh, the light, the way the sun sits in the sky yeah. reminds me of coming to the end of the school year, those lazier days at school, you know, maybe you're going to watch a movie. Yeah. Maybe like, you know, all the assignments are done. You're going to stack all the chairs and things like that. You're going to, you know, oh, let's go for ice cream after school because, you know, there's, yeah. a, you know, it signaled the start of, you know, more sleepovers, you know, everything started coming towards and the light for me is, is very memorable in the way the world kind of feels. In a way that it looks, yeah, basically, exactly, and that and that's kind of you know where my head is at as I you know look outside and walk around, and this this year does not feel like that. I've I've kind of got this. I mean, this year's been very strange, but I'm wondering what the little shift that I can make to make it feel a little bit more, um, not Christmassy. But like a little bit more Decembery. Let's say that. Like you say, coming to an end. You know, like this is this is the first year we're not together around this time of year, I think. And there is like this it's there's a lack of energy, but there is also a different kind of energy. I think it's a changing of energies. I think there was a lot of excitement last year. There was like this real thing and this year's like, you know, there's new things, all sorts of great new things happening. But like, there's this, I don't know, different, different, different vibe. Last year was like, our December last year was fucking mental. We had the adventure sh- headline show on the same day that I had my best friend's box party. And then Ben, our brother and his family were over. Yeah. And we were getting ready for them to arrive and you, you were coming in. I was... I was coming in from from England. I had a I had the wedding to go to on New Year's Eve. Origin was two days. Like we it had was a bunch of other it, things to do in between. It, it was just jam packed. It was jam packed. It was just like doing stuff constantly. There was a lot of energy. Now, you know, there's not. It's good. Christmas is going to be three of you. Mm. I'm not there. Ben's in 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 te- in America. I guess it's gonna feel less Christmassy. I'm fucking working on Christmas Eve, man. <laughs> That's the, the the weirdest part about this for me is usually I work a job that's like we're closed for fucking two weeks over Christmas, and so it would always be for so long. It's always been. Um, heaps of time off over Christmas, and we do like family stuff, and then I'll. I'll do Origin and then I'll go play golf with Sam and I'll get drunk and like it's basically two weeks of like drinking and partying, balancing finances until you go back to doing some work. But this this year I got a message the other day saying like you can either work New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve. And I was like, I definitely want to work Christmas Eve because I can do I can still get some Christmasy shit done, but I would like to experience New Year's Eve in London with my London friends, and I'm definitely not going to go to work on New Year's Day. Yeah. So th- this doesn't even feel like honestly, it doesn't really feel like Christmas to me. I, I w- when we get a tree in the house, it might and like start populating it with some presents, and you know, you walk down um, around Soho, and there's like Christmas lights and stuff going on, and that feels a bit Christmassy, but. Yeah, it's really odd, man. I've got a bit of den- I think I've got a bit of Christmas denial. Um as in as in like it doesn't feel like it therefore I'm not behaving like it's happening like the, the, I could be in September. I could even be in February. I could be in ancient Mesopotamia in <laughs> 2000 BC like it doesn't feel it doesn't <laughs> buy these gourds filled with grain <laughs> <laughs> um like it yeah it, it's it's odd man it, it's funny how you measure we may have spoken about this before like i remember telling you how i sometimes measure stuff and relate it to school 
Mm. And I, it feels sometimes like it's high school. And I think that's because, you know, and you said before, like December feels like the end of school. And I think that's be- be- because that's like the kind of the last time that you measure this the year in absolute structure. Like for 12 years of your life, it's like I got two weeks holiday here, two weeks holiday here, eight weeks holiday here. Eight you weeks. live you live by that structure so steadily and then when you kind of go out into the real world and get a job and do whatever your weeks are suddenly like you know you've got four weeks to take off a year uh, and you get christmas day off and you get new year's at, you know maybe a day off at new year's eve or maybe your office closes or, or or your time is suddenly different so you we kind of revert back to how we feel when time mattered a bit more, when there was more absolutes. Yeah, I also think, I don't know, there's also just something weird in the air for me. I don't know what it is. I can't You keep looking my... up and Sorry. it feels like maybe the roof is going to collapse. Is you no, again, yeah. it's, it's the angle I'm at. Is, with... is it a structural issue? Yeah, I don't think it's not a structural in- issue. I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the full moon, Jonathan. I have no idea. But it is, uh, it's making me feel a certain thing. And I'm unsure of what that, I'm completely unsure of what that feeling is. Unease? Perhaps, but also I just need to go and do some hard exercise and I'll probably feel fantastic. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you can you, you can sneak you can sneak out and just kind of, do a couple of push-ups now if it, if you, if it might make you feel a little better or maybe just have a little bit of a release from your um, s- semen sack. Um, I'm okay, thanks. Um, uh, I No, I'm going to go in the morning. I, I was going to ask you how you've handled, how, how are you feeling considering that you're not going to see your family on Christmas, does it? Do you? Does that matter to you? Because I know a lot of the governments are doing all sorts of things to be able to, for, you know, Christmas to feel to be a family thing and everything like that. And I wanted to get your perspective on if you if you mind so much or if you're like, oh, it's cool. I'll chat. I'll chat to them on the phone every week. It's all good. I'm I'm doing something else Christmassy with my friends. Yeah, I mean, at some point, your association with tradition and what you do every year has to change. And while I would like to be with the family on Christmas, like, of course I would. I'm also, I know that that can't happen and I'm going to entertain, like do something different for Christmas this year. And I'm not, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, this is a, the beginning or the, a, a, a different stage of me doing it's not a different stage because it's not like I'm going to just start not doing Christmas with the family but like it's just a, a different a year I do something different in and I'm I'm kind of excited to spend it with you know my London friends we're going to I'm going to have dinner with Tash and Tony um I want to try to spend some some time with with my housemates and um, Deacon and Seb and like and just kind of experience a couple of Christmases. I might get like three or four Christmases in. Yeah, baby shoehorn in. Have you toyed with the idea of going to another location for Christmas? There was talk of going to Iceland. What's the legality of that? The legality of that is I would I believe oh, Delia messaged me the other day with some details. I think it's sev- you have to have a you have to have a COVID test when you land, and it's three days to get the results. So you have to quarantine for three days. But I think you can quarantine in the place you're going to stay. I reckon you should look into that. I'm planning to go, but just not over that time. Okay, it'd be a pretty unique experience. I completely agree. I would rather go there and have have time with our Icelandic family because I do think of them as family. Mm. Um, I would rather do that when it's not super family orientated time like Christmas or New Year. I want to do it 
I definitely want to do it probably in January. Yeah. When it's okay. still cold and the ice is, the lake is frozen over and, you know, it doesn't get dark at all. But to do it around Christmas, you know, this is my first Christmas in London. Oh, no, it will be very dark. Probably, oh, yeah, it'll be very dark. It'll be, like, won't be light at all, sorry. Yeah, this is my first Christmas in London. This is, you know, maybe my only Christmas in London. I want to be in here, here and spend it with Tash and Tony. And I, and I, really, Tash and Tony are, like, my family here. You know, we, we live together and they helped me so much. And I think that it would be something I missed out on if I didn't spend Christmas with them. It's really important for me to spend that time with, with Tash and Tony because, you know, they can't go back to their families either. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think we're, we've, you know, we made like a little family here. So, we're going to give it our best shot. There, there is talk. I do have to talk to them. There's talk about going elsewhere getting out of London, you know, maybe it's just going down to some seaside town. Gloucestershire ham, perhaps. Gloucestershire ham is high on the list. Um, so, you, your discombobulation is just a kind of unknown, it just feels like a shift. I don't know what it is, man. I, 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 I pu- actually put it down to, um, yeah, I put it right down to exercise, to be honest. Um, okay. And maybe some just like, sleeping as well just trying to get um uh i overslept some of the time over the weekend i missed a mate's birthday because i was i overslept after some day drinking and then i got some like late nights in there i don't know i'm finding sleep is um yeah i'm pretty simple i think like food <laughs> sleep um, exercise, those are the things that affect me. And if I can balance them, then I feel good. I, I saw um, Tommy Dub, big up Tommy Dub, who owns and runs Hive Gym in Wangara. If you want to change your lifestyle, hit him up, Hive Gym. You should go see him. On Instagram um, and Facebook. Uh, I saw a post from him this morning that said, uh, people ask me about supplements and, you know, what things I can add to my workout routine to to really uh, ramp it up. I, you know, I want change. I'm going to go to start going to the gym. What supplements do I need to take? And he was like, I always just say the same thing. Eight hours of sleep, four liters of four or five liters of water, um, meditation, meditation and mindfulness practice, um, a solid plan and managing expectations. Like it was just such like a simple thing. And the the thing at the top of the list was sleep. And it's like, oh man, when you fucking, when it's people always looking for quick fixes everywhere. But I think the first thing you need to do, and I mean, I'm saying this to myself as well, because I do not follow this. I do not fucking follow this. I went to bed at 2.30 last night. Arguably, I had dinner with a friend and got home at about two. But I, when I got home, I was like, oh, I went on the computer and did some stuff. Like, it's, you, you know, this, if people just didn't look at screens, if people actually didn't look at screens for the last three hours of their night, if they meditated before they woke, when they woke up or they went to bed, and then they went to bed at, at the same time every night. Yeah, consistency. That could change so much. I really want to work some more consistency into my life. At the moment, it's, you know, I tell myself that it's quite hard to do that because I'm working uh, kind of late night sometimes and I'll get home at 12 o'clock and I can't say that I'm going to wake up at 6.30 and go to the gym every morning because then I'll just have not enough sleep. So, I'm trying to work out a routine that is a bit more solid, but, but I know that you know that's a that's a big blind spot for me and probably for a lot of people sleep and water <laughs> yeah uh, big ones um hansons don't have too much trouble with water we probably drink too much uh, he says as he watches his brother suckle from the pint of water i jeff we we've we've had this conversation before but people have asked us what would drink would you like to drink for the rest of your life and people say like fruit juice or 
Coke or like Pepsi Max, it's all for me. Wrong! 100% H2O. H2O, man. I want water. If there's a glass of cold water by me at all times, I would be a content, happy person. I agree. Um, I, I back to just quickly the routine and sleep thing. I, I think I haven't been the, the most routine person for the longest time. I resisted routine for years, cons- thinking that in some way it would fuck up the freedom I enjoyed so much. Yeah, for sure. Like, no, nah, I don't want to set a bedtime that I go to or like I don't want to have set things I do on certain afternoons or something that's like because then you have to say no to other things yeah that means I'm not open to do anything and like I'd suffer from FOMO massively as a a child there were definitely times I shat my pants because I didn't want to do something (laughs) else I just like would be like so excited I just like I'm not going to the toilet I'm gonna shit my pants how old were you? Oh, too old. What? What You were... In primary school. You yeah. shit your pants because you're like, I'm not having any of this. It was like a defense mechanism. <laughs> not a defense mechanism. Just like... like a fucking uh, turtle or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought like, man, I'm, I don't want to leave what I'm doing. I'm so... Invested in what I'm doing, so like, I'm. I'm Have you seen your pants in the studio before? No, never. This, this is this is not something that's happened recently. Um, <laughs> but I def I definitely remember having these things where I'd be like, I just yeah, and I think that developed into f- mad FOMO as a as a teenager, and then like still, you know, throughout my twenties, definitely FOMO, and like so the thing I'm saying is feel free to shit your pants because it just means you have no routine. No, what I'm saying is that I resisted routine for the longest time because I thought it would res- uh, wouldn't be work for me. But then probably in the last, I don't know, three or four years, I developed some more routines, some things that I like doing, some things that I I know put me in my best stead to be my best self. And... Actually, there's there's a lot of freedom when you start to put limitations on things. Like, mm. I know I'm going to have this for lunch. I know or I know I'm going to do this as my first two things in the morning, which means you don't think about them. So you've got more bandwidth to think about other things. Mm. And you know, it also makes you feel good because you know if something is not right, feeling right, or, you know, a bit like I'm feeling, you know, just right at this very moment, I know I'm going to get up early in the morning and hit the gym and get on with my day and, you know, that's fine. I know what's wrong Hmm. and I know how to solve it so I don't have to pay any thought rather than sitting here being like, whoa, something feels really weird, you know, and, uh, you know, letting that run away with itself i don't know i um also don't know why i brought up the fact that i shot myself as a child but there you go i think it's definitely yeah that the the startings of that that fomo and that feeling <laughs> it was foam it was foamy <laughs> foamy uh definitely that feeling of um i don't want to miss out on anything yeah like, I remember, I you know, uh, throughout my 20s, just, like, not making plans because I wanted to be, like, ready for anything. Like, yep. Ready I'd, for the best plan. Yeah, I'd say yes to everything and commit to nothing and, you know. I'm still like that. I'm trying, really, you know, just fucking trying not to be like that, but, yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm just, I still do some of that stuff because I do want to do a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. You can do a lot. You can do all the things. You can have it all, so to speak. But you just have to work out the one, the reality of it, to limit your expectations, and know that you can probably achieve more in a month than you can achieve. You overestimate what you can achieve in a week, and underestimate what you can achieve in a month, as they say. And you know, you can shrink that down to a, a day and a week as well. So, mm. uh, you know, give yourself some space. 
and allow yourself time to breathe and go like, oh, that's cool. I, I've done enough. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, you know, and yeah, for me, some of those things is like, you know, check in, like, am I eating right? Have I exercised? Have I done the mindful practices that I have? And if I say yes to all of those, then chances are I feel pretty good. And if I'm, if I say no to like, at least one of the three or sometimes two of the three, then I know I'm just, that's, that's why I feel bad. And that's why I just need to rectify, I guess. Mm. Yeah. That's good to be aware of. Yeah. Probably got more than three, but yeah, it is good to be aware of. And it's only come as I've become more aware of myself, Jonathan. That's good, Jeff. And when you shoot yourself that many times, you really become very aware of yourself. Very aware. Um, I was just going to ask, uh, for next week, I think, do you want to come back to me with, uh, some, some highlights or some, um, of your year or, uh, at least, or, or a thing that you've worked on this year that you're, you're, we've worked on well. Kind of like a, a highlight reel for the year. Yeah. I mean, we're probably going to do a, a reflective podcast somewhere in there, but yeah, because the next question I was going to ask you is, um. How do you think you've gone this year, Jonathan? Well, that's not a good question to end this year at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a daunting question for you? No. <sighs> it's not daunting. It's just, it's a lot to think about. You know, it's that's, that's good reflect. You know what? We should set a reflection podcast that is... You know, we're going to be doing one on Christmas, around Christmas. So maybe that should be the podcast. That'll be the last podcast we release this this year. And then the first the first podcast will be probably on the 2nd of December. Sorry, January. And that should be plans for the plans for the next year. Yeah, that's a good one. I also think we should do the drunk podcast. Yeah, I mean we can do we can do a drunk podcast this year around Christmas time. I mean, uh, Jeff, I can drink from tomorrow. I've got, I've done 30 days. Oh, yeah. Let's get a little update on that before you go, man. What are you on? 30 days. 30 days. Feeling pretty good. Kind of won't, don't really want to go back to drinking that much. I'm excited. Like, I'm excited to have a day. I'm going to see a friend on, on Saturday and have some booze. I'm going to be seeing Byron and Jana off on Thursday night and have a couple of beers, but like, I don't really want to get wasted. There's so much value in not being hungover and like not needing it. As long as you can tell yourself that, it's easy enough to tell yourself that now, but can you tell yourself that? Do you have the discipline now to be like, oh, I'm going to stop now or whatever, like the priorities? I think so. And the, the, like, I, I do miss just having like a, a glass, a couple of glasses of wine. Yeah, it's nice. But I think it'll be now to be like, oh, I can have two glasses of wine and that's it, rather than being like, ah, oh, like maybe we should get another bottle. Can you tell me uh, a health benefit that you've felt from not drinking for 30 days? Um, yes, I have felt sharper in my brain and in my thinking. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's been like mental... Uh, benefits, uh, highlighting some things, I guess not having the fog of alcohol that kind of around you at all. It's not like, again, it's not like I was drinking every single day, but there's a kind of fog that appears and there's, uh, when, when you're hungover or when you're, when you're a drinking. Br- a brown kind of, mist of sorts. A brown mist that hides some realities. I think you kind of hide realities from yourself a little. And now that, brown mist is dissipated i'm surrounded by more of a kind of clear clear fresh air that's um allowing me to see see things a bit clearer apart from mental benefits i think i've been eating more sugar which is actually not a benefit <laughs> oh man i've had some sugary sugary weeks and it's really fucked with me eh? man i had fucking four Four big slices of red velvet cake at Byron's on Sunday. Like, no shit. Cake as soon as I got there and then cake before, just after lunch and then cake just before I left. 
plus another dessert of ice cream. I We add so much sugar. When you eat more sugar, you eat more sugar. And that sounds like a silly sentence, but when you, you crave more sugar, I should say. Like yeah. when you eat it, you crave it. And when you don't, you can easily say no. But you tr- you you have something, you have a little sugary snack with your coffee in the morning and you'll crave a little something, something. And then when it comes around to dessert for night, it's, it's so much harder to say no. And then the next day as well, because the way your stomach acids and your microbiome in you, it demands that, that food. Maybe for December, I could do no sugar. Go on. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm definitely cutting out... Some shit. For, Let's do that. Um, for Let's December. go for December, no sugar. I just did November, no alcohol. December, no sugar. No sugar. I mean. What's that mean? Whew, whew, I mean, that means no fruitcake, Jeff. No refined sugar. Well, means no cake at all. December without cake? No sugar. Like, why don't we go till the, to the 20th of December from the 1st to the 20th? Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have we don't have cake. <laughs> we Sounds don't like we have, have cake all the time. <laughs> I've just got a cake in the fridge basically 24 hours a day. Have a little slice here and there. Um, okay, so no biscuit. My man biscuits is a real fucking <laughs> uh real hard for me. Biscuits honestly are like cigarettes for me. Really? Like, I'm more addicted. Uh, no, I'm probably more addicted to biscuits. Than <laughs> I must admit, man, when I buy myself snacks, um, I was speaking to someone recently. Like, when you're a kid, all you want to do is eat chips all the time. Oh, I'm going to oh, eat yeah. ice cream oh, all yeah. the time, and then your parents you like, no, you can't. You can't do it. But if you wanted to, as an adult, you could stay up all night watching television and eat all the ice cream in the fridge. But you don't because you will feel so bad. I have definitely exercised that fantasy at certain parts of my life. Sounds like your red velvet cake fantasy was pretty. <laughs> in fucking lockdown, in lockdown, I bought a tub of ice cream. I had a date during the first lockdown with a girl. She came over, we made some food, and she, she said, I'll bring dessert. Uh, and she was like, Is that a it's going to be... No, it's <laughs> uh, it's going to be olive oil and ice cream. And I was like, olive oil and ice cream? She's like, yeah, trust me. It's amazing. And her friend, her housemates, they kind of imported their own olive oil. Olive oil. So, she, she brought like this little bottle over and we got some really nice vanilla ice cream and had um, a little bowl of vanilla ice cream, olive oil and some sea salt. And it was amazing. It was the best Yum. Thing ever. It was so good. I didn't see her again. We decided not to see each other after that. But she had given me this olive oil. And we hadn't really got that deep into the ice cream. So I still had like four liters of ice cream left. And over the next three days, I had that dessert every night. But I didn't even put it in a bowl. I would just pour the olive oil into the tub of ice cream and then season with salt and mix it around. So then every time I refroze it, it would be kind of more olive oily and then I'd add olive oil. <laughs> and more salty. So I was just having like olive oil and ice cream, which is basically just pure fat and sugar. And watching Godzilla on Netflix or, <laughs> or these other these other movies, you know, and I had that I had my I had my hedonism time. You I loved ice cream as a kid as well. Oh, fucking I do love ice cream. <laughs> Give me a tub of ice cream. And nobody home and I won't even know when to stop. <laughs> Give me a t- I man, I used to I used to have a tub of ice cream, watch some TV, probably probably whack off and would be pretty happy would be a content little little man um (laughs) but yeah but 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 i mean we can reflect on some of the more hedonistic and some of the more controlled parts of this year in our reflection podcast yeah um but back to the sugar sugar. no sugar you want to do no sugar i don't don't think i think no sugar is a bit 
wild. I think we'll Let's come back. We'll come back. We'll come up with it off the off the air, and then we'll report back next week what we're doing. Because okay. I reckon but whatever we're doing, we're going to do today. Yep, let's start today. Okay. Um, I think you. it should be no sugar. Yeah, but there's got to be guidelines on that no sugar because you're saying no fruit, Jonathan. You're saying no bread, no complex carbohydrates. There's sugars in there. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, but I mean, know, let's talk about sugar. it off the mix. Sweet, bro. Okay, I will um, speak to you after we stop recording this, like we always do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. I love you. Um, just for a change, I'm going to hang up straight away. So I'll chat to you next week. I love you too. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on your podcast app and keep up to date with all new episodes. They're going to be coming out once a week. We are Echo and Sidetrack on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, on Twitter, we are Echo Sidetrack. Go listen to our music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, or wherever your ears consume happiness. Lots of love, people. <laughs> <laughs>